Inside the Birds is back. What's going on, everybody? Adam Kaplan, Jeff Mosher here for our Inside the Birds post-game podcast. From the link where the Eagles lose 17-9 to in the NFC Wild Card game. Adam, this is our last post-game podcast of 2019. Definitely not our last pod. I want everybody to know you and I are going to be keeping this thing going in heavy rotation throughout the offseason until the start of next season. So you and I aren't going anywhere, but the season is done for the Eagles. They lose 17-9. There are probably more topics than we have time to get to, but who would have thought that they would lose by the exact same score that they lost to the Seahawks six weeks ago in the same venue? How's that even possible? Is that set an NFL record, Jeff? It Two might. teams not in the same division but at the same conference, they play at the same venue and they they – they put up the same score, only 26 points, 17 to nine, both games. But you know, look, obviously, Jeff, the story is a game of the game for the Eagles. Is simply this: Carson Wentz gets hurt, that changed everything. He gets hurt in the first quarter, very early, with a head injury when he gets speared really illegally by Jadavian Clowney, mm-hmm. who had a very good game for guys playing with a sports hernia, and uh, they simply could not could not protect well enough. Uh, Josh McCown got sacked six times. But the story obviously is once going down early, and that changed the game. Yeah, um, a lot of dynamics changed as far as the matchups you and I talked about going into the game. First of all, the Eagles, as we noted in the pregame or preview podcast, the Eagles were one of the best red zone teams in the NFL with Carson Wentz. Situationally, they were fantastic on third down, fantastic in the red zone, top five in both. Uh, you saw tonight three trips to the red zone. No touchdowns, clearly. And I'm not blaming Josh McCown. He gets thrown into the fire, but that's a big difference. And I think that it's fair to suggest or even think that Carson Wentz pulling the trigger the entire game, there's a different result and more points on the scoreboard. No question. And Carson barely played when he did. They, the first series wasn't very good. He got sacked, missed a couple throws. It, he just needed to keep playing and get himself out of it, but he never got the chance because he got hit. I expect Clowney's going to get fined for that because – he lowered his helmet to initiate contact. It doesn't matter whether quarterback was sliding or not. You can't mm-hmm. do. You cannot lower your head. That's the rule. Right. So, we'll, we'll, and I know, I know, Doug Peterson wasn't happy about it, but nevertheless, as you said, it changed the focus of the game. Uh, if Miles Sanders, don't forget, a couple of things happened. Miles Sanders left the game uh, with what looked to be a hip injury. They never announced it, but it was very clear he got hit on the side, and he didn't look right. It looked awkward when he got hurt. He left for a while, and then kept his helmet on for a couple series and then he got back in the second half uh you know boston scott took over but jeff here's my question to you why does jordan howard dress but not play that is a great question it's something that to me is a waste of a roster spot i mean i don't know how much elijah holyfield who was signed off the practice or who was signed as a street free agent who spent the year on carolina's practice squad could have helped but if you just need an emergency running back to run downhill five or six times a game because you have injuries, then that would have made sense to me instead of having Jordan Howard there collecting dust. So that's one of the topics we're going to get into in this game. Um, Real quick, Adam, from a big picture takeaway from this loss, the season's over, Carson started the game, and you can make a very strong argument that every single game he played in December was a playoff atmosphere, and we saw what he could do. But he did get robbed of his first playoff game I think that that's unfortunate for him I don't think the Eagles were going to make it or win the Super Bowl this year so the 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 secondary thing you were hoping for was Carson Wentz to get as much playoff experience as possible in the end it's just for four pass attempts and one completion yeah look the great thing is Jeff as you said they the the four games he prepared for were like play the playoff atmosphere and then I would also had he, he had to prepare for a playoff game. He actually, this re, a real playoff game, not just four games to get them into the playoffs. So mm-hmm. now he knows the way that you prepare. He'll take that into next season. And then the question is, who, how are they going to help him? Well, well, that'll be part of our offseason shows where we go through the roster and we dissect it. We do sort of like an autopsy of where, where what they have, uh, the guts of the team and where they need to go and who needs to come back and who needs not to come back. Well, that's that's just another story for another show, but mm-hmm. I give I give them credit. And Doug Peterson was so right in his his post game press conference. The heart and the leadership, and they never they never give in despite everything going against them with injuries. I mean, it's just 
you, you can't make it up. And I didn't, we, we didn't mention Brandon Graham left with a knee injury. He was out for a couple series. He, then he came back. Right. Um, so Zachary. it's just, it's yeah, Zach. Oh my God. Yeah. Glad you brought that up. Zach confirmed after the game that he didn't have one, just broken rib. He had two. He had the kidney thing. He was in the high, spent Monday in the hospital. He had blood in his urine. His wife took care of him at home. He wanted to come back for, you know, for his teammates. Um, Although I will tell you that I know that he wanted to play the previous week, but yeah. it just was not enough time. Right. Um, but I give this guy credit. His career was almost ended, I think, four years ago with a chest injury. He was about six inches away uh, from from ending it. And bottom line, it's a guy's tough as nails. He got Everyone saw the hit that he took two weeks ago. Uh, I give him unbelievable amount of credit. He's a special person, a special football player. Mm-hmm. But moving on here, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Look, let's um let's go back you, real quick to the. Want to start the on the offense? Yeah, let's go, sorry, let's go, go to ahead. the hit on on Clowney because as you yeah. brought up, um it it should have been an illegal hit. But I want to say two things about it. One, the referee Sean Smith was asked about it after the game, and by the time people yeah. listen to this podcast, I'm sure they'll hear it. But I want to I want to quote him, and his response was quote He was a runner and he did not give himself up. Talking about Carson Wentz, we saw incidental helmet contact, and in our judgment. We didn't rule that to be a foul. So the the follow up question from Zach Berman from the Athletic, and it was a good one, was, "Well, have you seen the replay? And do you have any reservations about the call?" And the answer is, "quote No, just based on what we saw on the field, we didn't deem it to be the foul." So again, the big takeaway here is they didn't see it through. I think if they had seen it on replay, they would understand that there was more helmet to helmet than they initially realized. But they were just acting in the heat of the moment, they saw the play, they saw Carson run, they saw the guy get hit and they didn't seem it deem it to be incidental. So we'll see if the NFL changes though, or at least comes out and says upon further review that this was a bad call. Um, I, I have a feeling, as you mentioned, that Al Riveron and his crew might do that. You never know, but we'll see. But second, I want to add to this. It was a, it was definitely a penalty, but this is not Vontez perfect. Uh, I think people are piling on oh, Clowney, yeah, 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 like yeah. the well, cheap well, shot artist. Well, you know and he why? Tried to do it, and I don't see that. You remember he flattened Nick Foles last year? Then but that, that was, was a legal hit too, right? That that one was actually called illegal. Yeah, yeah, at the time. Well, yeah, I know yeah. the pass was completed to Alshon Jeffrey in that, and so they may still right. find a penalty. But right, right, no, but he did get called for it. Um, yeah. but look, I give them credit for hanging in Seattle. You know, you mentioned to me off before we started, you know, you got to be careful with how much you throw. And you're right with, with Russell Wilson because he got hit 11 times and their line was terrible. They had three they had three backups playing. But what I will tell you, the reason why the score was close, because they just were not attacking the secondary enough in the first half. Mm-hmm. But I would also tell you part of it's because he was getting hit. But to me, I'm, I'm going, here's what I'm doing, Jeff. If I'm Seattle, I'm going – Max protect, or I'm going two tight ends a lot, and we don't have access to the play counts yet. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm attacking that secondary because, quite frankly, Jeff, I know this is not our first offseason show, but I don't know how you make a case for anyone. But uh, I, mean, I give LeBlanc credit; he he really battled. But other than Maddox and maybe LeBlanc, because he's he's not going to cost you anything; he's just a part of the backup group. I, I just don't know how you can compete at a high enough level to be a good playoff team with a group of quarterbacks they have. I'm just being real here. Yeah, I have a really interesting stat about uh, what wide receivers did to the Eagles this year, particularly rookies that we're going to get to when we dissect uh, the breakdowns of defense in this game. Mm -hmm. Going back to the quarterback a little bit. Now, McCown comes in, and this is why I think that we we love the the McCown signing in the offseason. Here's a veteran, and look, he gave you what he could give you given the potent, the practice that he put in. He held onto the ball too long. He's a backup quarterback. He has not much rhythm and chemistry with a lot of these wide receivers. But for the most part, he moved the ball. He made some nice throws, and he put the team in position to get some points. He's just the backup quarterback, so there's not much to expect there. He also took a lot of hits and had a hammy injury. But I thought, in general, um, a lot of people thought that Doug needed to start getting crazy and, you know, throwing the ball, Greg Ward and running the Wildcat when Carson was out. And, I, you know, I had tweeted, no, no, just stay the course. And you know what? They almost pulled it off. They did not. But I, I think Doug did the right thing. Yeah. And, and don't forget, they're hamstrung by Miles Sanders leaving the game. That and, and the other thing is you can't go with your tempo offense because McCown didn't have any reps this week with the first team offense. Right. Backup doesn't get any reps. 
with the with the ones. So you you couldn't run tempo, which would really be good for them over that four game stretch, where Carson was in such a rhythm. Um, sometimes calling the play at the line, um, not huddling, mostly mostly in shotgun, a little bit under center, but you know, going faster. They, they can't they couldn't do it, so they they were out of rhythm. Uh, Goddard. Some of the good stories got got very hot. He was playing that that power forward where he boxes the guy out. Boy, he's been doing that a lot lately, Jeff. I'm sure you've seen that. Yeah. He's, he squares the guy up. He blocks out both arms. He puts his butt out there, and he he, he boxes the guy out. Yeah, big game from him. Yeah, he did a good job. You know, Zach uh, very violently uh, you know, went out there. He did have the biggest catch of the game in terms of yardage, 32 yards. Uh, he did seem to play a lot, and I, I don't know how he did it. Guy's unbelievably tough. And – what I called for in last Friday's show, they, they got to get Shelton Gibson in there. Oh, boy, did they, Jeff. Shelton Gibson played, and he drew a big P.I. Absolutely, he did, and that was a good call by you. Uh, he was a downfield presence. I was even surprised that they went to him, but it made a lot of sense in that situation. And, man, it's just one of those things where they were so close, so close, right, so close. Uh, I don't question Doug going for – for it twice there at the end of the game and skipping the field goals. They were down by eight. So even if they get field goals on both times, that's still two point. That's six points. They're still down two, and you're trying to get the ball back, and they never did. One problem I have. Okay. Second and 14. You've got the three run. minutes left. Yeah. You're down nine. What are you doing? I, I know. And I know. He sh- what was the game? Was it Miami? What was the game where he shocked us on a third nine where Miles hit it and got the first down? It was shocking. Mm-hmm. But that's not with three minutes left in the game, okay? <laughs> I know. You're throwing the football. I know you're going to – some people say, well, yeah, but who's he throwing to? It doesn't matter. No, no. My my, my, football. my defense would only be this, and I'm not – like uh, my rationale for him, second and 14 is such an obvious pass down. you got a light box. You're really trying to set up a manageable third down for your quarterback, right? Uh, and so if you can get a five or six or seven yard run there and you give yourself – third and five or six or seven that's a little bit easier than second and 14 if it's incomplete now it's third and 14 and it's completely unmanageable down but i but uh, that's maybe overthinking it but that that is the way sometimes coaches feel they're trying to get themselves their their quarterback especially a backup in a more manageable situation i would have been okay with it with 10 minutes left when you when Mm -hmm. you're basically down to your last series um and then the other thing is i some people said i don't necessarily agree with them that they had three timeouts there, and they let it get down to the two-minute warning. Some people wanted them to stop the clock first, so mm. that was a little bit of a strategy thing. But um, just too many things went wrong. Uh, with Fanners leaving, as I said, I think the, the, the Wentz injury was by far the most impactful, not only injury, mm-hmm. situation that went down. And unfortunately, it set them up for the game. But yet, but yet, they hung in there. The defense, yes, they gave up. DK, DK Metcalf destroyed them, embarrassed them. I mean, you, you can't make it up. They ran the same damn post, the, the, the deep post, the same play, Jeff. Yeah. The same play that be, that they should have been beat when the first, in the first matchup when Metcalf dropped it. They ran the same play, and he beat them this time for the 53-yard touchdown. And, oh, by the way, the last play of the game, they went for a, a beat, double team. That guy is an absolute beast. Yeah, and um, I, unfortunately, that was kind of like a uh... – uh, rinse, wash, repeat type thing all year long because that's all we've seen is Eagles cornerbacks get beaten by the deep post. So, um, I th- but you know we, we'll talk defense. I think that wraps it up pretty much on the offense. We talked about um, the contributions from from Ertz and Goddard. You know the, what you got from wide receivers and Greg Ward is a guy who will probably get an opportunity. Will definitely get an opportunity to make the team again, and we'll see yeah. what happens. And and you know we'll see what happens with with McCown. Uh, you know he's he definitely is a good backup quarterback and. I thought it was interesting. He, he talked about helping out the wide receivers a lot um, in practice this week. He's been a big help to the wide receivers. And, you know, maybe he's got some coaching um, in, in, his, well, in his background if he wants to stop playing and be a coach. Uh, he knows that. He, he'd, be, he'd be a quarterback coach tomorrow if he wants to be in the NFL. Uh, he, you know, he coaches high school football. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the, the, see, the, the issue there is this. Josh has a family. He lives in North Carolina. It's very important to him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was able to go home, you know, that arrangement with the Eagles where he'd go home Friday night, uh, you know, spend the time in the, with the coach the football, but he also has a young family and it's important to him to spend time with them. So he's going to have a decision to make. Look, remember he retired 
And because of circumstances, he came out because the Eagles offered him something. They, By the way, they had talked to him and his agent probably in the spring to see what his plans were. He said, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go into television. And then when um, Sudfeld got hurt, they, uh, you know, he hurt his wrist mm-hmm. and called him. Great, sir. Great kid. And boy, there's a great piece by uh, NJ.com on him this the past week. You got to read it. It was really awesome. Yeah. Well, if the Eagles could make it happen, it would be nice uh, to see him, them try to retain him in some capacity. Um, yeah. Let's let's move on to the defensive side. There's a lot to talk about there. And then some quirkier things that we noticed in the game that we wanted to get to. But before we do that, we'll pause here for a message from our sponsors. Hey, it's Jeff Mosher. Adam Kaplan and I love using Anchor for our Inside the Birds podcast every week. It's so user-friendly, anyone can create their own podcast, and you should too. Just download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Anchor gives you everything you need to start your own podcast from your phone or computer. Its creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast for a professional sound, and Anchor will distribute your podcast for you to Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and so many other platforms. It can be heard by everyone, just like Inside the Birds. You can also make money from your pod with no minimum listenership. What are you waiting for? Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to create your podcast today. Hey, it's Jeff Mosher. Are you interested in money? Yep, I thought so. Well, on the Talk Money with Mesh Lakani podcast, Mesh will follow paper trails, chat with experts, and break down complex ideas to bring clarity to the mystical financial phenomena and help listeners uncover the story behind their money. Each of these compelling stories will hit a broad range of subjects ranging from buying Bitcoin, dealing with student debt, and everything in between. So if you're interested in money, and I know you are, Check out the Talk Money with Mesh Lakani podcast on Anchor. If you're listening to this, you obviously like podcasts, and you probably like music too. On Spotify, you can listen to all of that in one place for free. That's right, you don't need a premium account. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcast so you never miss an episode. You can download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are. You can easily share what you're listening to with your friends via Spotify's integrations with social media platforms like Instagram. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now. Just search for Inside the Birds on the Spotify app or browse podcasts in the Your Library tab. And follow me, Jeff Mosher, so you never miss an episode of Inside the Birds. Spotify is the world's leading music streaming service, and now it can be your go-to for podcasts, too. Okay, uh, the big thing on defense, Adam, is we said going into the game in our preview podcast that the Seahawks had backups at center, left guard, and left tackle. This was going to be a game in particular where Fletcher Cox had to dominate the line of scrimmage and the point of attack. I thought he did. I thought Vinny Curry did. I thought Brandon Graham did. He, he came out and came back in. Uh, I, I think Derek Barnett played well, but he had a very costly uh, late hit penalty. Yeah, I'll say this. they they um. It's a shame because they went with a lot of man coverage. At first half, they did fairly well. Second half, the dam broke. Uh, Metcalf got them. Um, boy, they, they roughed up Russell Wilson. They hit him 11 times. Uh, I know people complain about the sack numbers, and of all people, Malcolm Jenkins got the sack. And, and this is why you got to actually watch the game, and we'll, 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 we'll see what the tape looks like. But Fletcher Cox, from my point of vantage point and yours, I said it last Friday's show. I thought he'd have a great game. He did. Um, but the thing that they're not getting, and this has been a problem with the secondary, Jeff, particularly this season, they don't force turnovers. That's correct. This is a major issue. And we've beaten up the secondary all season, even before they got hurt, before the corners got hurt. That's going to be an off-season project for the Eagles. They got to cure the receiver problem and on defense, a cornerback problem because it's not and has zero chance to go away. Now, on their touchdown drive that ended with Marshawn Lynch scoring a touchdown, Adam. There what were a touchdown, two, by the way. Oh yeah, there were two third and longs. There was a third and ten that was converted by a Russell Wilson throw to DK Metcalf across the middle. It was like an eight-yard throw, but he had a lot of space, so he turned it into a 26-yard um, pickup. And then there was the throw to Moore, number 83. 
right on a third and six or seven. Oh, the crosser, yeah, deep cross. Yeah. Where you saw uh, who missed the tackle on that? Cravon LeBlanc missed the tackle. Yes, correct. And yep. it went. And unfortunately, this has been an area of strength for the defense, for the Eagles defense on third down. We mentioned that. And it's not been a particularly strong part of Seattle's uh, offense. But in this particular game, Seattle converted 53% of its third downs, eight for 15. And that's bad. Again, you look at those areas where the oh. game was won and lost and right there. Well, and also Russell Wilson's new name should be the backbreaker. Oh. How many backbreaking runs did he, ha- uh, you know, how demoralizing those runs are when he beats the defense for first down. Yes. Oh God. Poor. I, I, I know it's got to drive Jim Schwartz crazy. I mean, it, the 22 yarder was terrible in the middle of the field. Um, he zigzags. he, and you think and the problem is you think you have him because everything's covered and then he just runs. Yeah. Well, I, remember I mentioned in the pregame podcast uh, that we did Friday that a team source told me that they were just so tired of losing to Seattle. And unfortunately, that's now six and zero. Oh, I believe that the Seahawks are against the Eagles in the Pete Carroll, Russell Wilson. Era. And guess what? What's that? They play him next year in Philly. They do play him next year. Believe in Philly. that. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Talk about the one team you don't want to see. Uh, man, that'll be a fun pregame podcast next year for that game. Uh, the corners, we, we talked about this a little bit. Doug decided to go with, I mean, Jim decided to go with Avante Maddox and Jalen Mills on the outside, Cravon LeBlanc on the inside. You can make an argument for maybe getting Sidney Jones or Rasul Douglas in there, but it's my opinion that I, I think he just went with his best three corners and that if you put the other two in there, in, in starting roles or nickel that you could have just as well seen the, just as well seen the same breakdowns. Yeah. So what they did is they lack size. Obviously Maddox is just under five, nine LeBlanc's in that area. Right. But you're right. They went, he went with their best corners and it just tells you where he's at with Douglas and, and Jones. He doesn't trust them. Mm-hmm. Transactions folks and lineup changes tell you a story or lineup decisions that the, the coaches don't need to tell you anything. They're telling you by what they did. It can't be challenged because that's a fact. Right. So that was crazy. I was not expecting quite like that. Uh, but I'll give – Cravon LeBlanc is very competitive, man. Mm. Remember, mm-hmm. he missed half the season. He did it more than half the season. He did a really good job. I'll give him – yeah, he made bad, bad, bad missed tackle. That, there's no excuse for it. Mm-hmm. A couple standouts, though, We other than, uh, other than 91. 75 Curry did it again. He showed up. It's a big play. And you saw him. When Brandon Graham left with his knee injury, Vinny had to play, and uh, he played a lot on the inside, by the way. Uh, I told you folks two months ago, Anthony Rush was a guy they never should have cut. When they brought him back, he is an absolute story against the run. He Good is the great, he is the great Berlin Wall. You get, this dude is a <laughs> massive human being. He is, he's so atypical of Jim Schwartz's schemes because usually Jim gets the yeah. undersized guys who fly, yeah. but yeah. he runs well. He's a, he's he gets up field good for a three hundred and fifty pounder. All right, you ready for my great stat Do that it. I told you about with yeah. the Eagles cornerbacks? Okay. DK Metcalf's one hundred and sixty yards made him gave him the fourth rookie effort of over one hundred and twenty five receiving yards against the Eagles this year. All right, could I guess them all? Yes. Okay, Slayton. Darius Slayton. Collect, correct. Terry McLaurin. Yep. Did he get two of them against him? He did. Terry McLaurin. Ah, I got them all. Uh-huh. So Metcalf, Slayton, McLaurin, and McLaurin. And guess what else is interesting Jeez. about those four guys, yeah. Adam? Okay. They were None of them were picked in the first round, and all four were picked after yeah. J.J. Ortega-Whiteside. Well, you know, look, it's year one. For JJ, <laughs> it, it couldn't have gone worse. That's our fallback all the time. Well, it's year one. It's year one for those guys, too. <laughs> but, but, but no, no, no. What I'm saying is. No, I know what you mean. He's going to have to produce next season. He's going to have to be on the field. He's going to have to be no worse than their fourth receiver. Right. I don't know that he'd even be that good. Um, it's going to be a coaching issue. Determine if they're going to have to develop him. He's going to have to work hard. Remember, they don't get these players until middle of a- April. Right. By, by rule. Um, and, and you look there, uh, well, it's funny. You say rookie receivers, the Vikings destroyed them. Remember the game in, uh, in Minnesota, oh, the yeah. Vikings, the, the Falcons got them. Devonta the Adams got them. Yeah. De- oh my De- Devonta. I, I, okay. <laughs> okay. Devonta Adams. This is where he hurt his turf toe. Okay. I think in the fourth quarter, maybe. Yes. Do you know what Devonta Adams had? Maybe he, I don't even think he played in the fourth. 
He had 180 yeah, 100, yards. 180 yards on 15 targets and 10 catches. Yep. Devontae Adams runs a 4-6. So, look, <laughs> we're not telling our listeners because they, they, they pointed out to us on our, our Twitter feed, and we appreciate it, what we've been telling people for weeks about the Eagles cornerback problem. That is a major challenge for the front office staff because they're not a playoff team. I don't care well Wentz plays and if they help them on offense. They're not a better than a 10 win team with these corners. I don't care how good their offense is. No, definitely something that we'll have to see um see what they do in the off season. And speaking of the off season, to, we'll we'll close this out. I was in the Eagles locker room after the game uh-huh. and I was talking I was among a couple of reporters talking with Jason Peters and I specifically asked Jason I said, Jason, how long does it take you at this stage of your career after the season is over to kind of figure out and decide if you're going to play again the next year? And he looked me straight in the eye and said, oh, I'm playing next year. So he went on to say that he felt like this was um, he felt as fresh as he's ever felt at the end of a year that he knows he has a false start issue that he thinks a lot of is with the motion that they do. And Jeff, just real quick, I cannot believe he admitted that. Yeah, he really. I, I, do you have a transcript? Of that? Oh, no, it's. I'm sorry, it's on the sound. You it's, got sound. Right? I was gonna say, check the Inside the Birds YouTube channel, and I posted the video oh of the interview. And he also said that oh. um, he feels like he can still play at a really high level, and that no defensive ends really got the best of him. Uh, so, uh, clowning guy. I, 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 mean, I agree with you. I'm just don't shoot the messenger. No, no, I know. I get <laughs> no, no, but I'm just saying what he's saying is a little bit questionable. But I agree. I have not right. seen your video. I've heard people have retweeted the hell out of. It, by the way um that is interesting because i've gotten the sense lately you know we had said before the season started there was no way that peters would return uh dillard had a very good preseason he really came on after his ot8s which were not very good the future is bright and then um when called upon you know obviously at right tackle is a disaster he got benched at halftime of that the first seattle game but that was at right tackle but I just get the sense, Jeff, that he's not quite where he needs to be. And I know he was a rookie and all that, but I'm not ruling out Jason Peters returning. But my question, and I know fans, when when you posted the video, were not happy with this. Yeah. My question to you would be, before we get out of here, would you be willing to bring him back as the swing tackle? Because I think there's a chance. I think there's a very good chance that Big V has played his last game for the Eagles. But why? Because he wants to start. Mm-hmm. I'm told the Eagles would like to have him back. But if you're Big V, you're going to want to start. Right. And that, um, that, that, that's I, why. I, yeah, I, I have a hard time answering it because I have a hard time thinking that Jason Peters, who just told me he's dominated defensive ends yeah. and graded higher, is going to be a backup swing tackle. I think he's going to wow. want to play and start. So both may leave. Well, based on your conversation with Peters, both may leave, and that means they. Well, Matt Pryor might have to be the sixth offensive lineman. Well, knows, either so. that, or and we'll you know this is something we'll talk about in the off season. Maybe the organization will look at. Andre Dillard and say, you know, he didn't really have a great rookie year. He struggled at times. Maybe we need another year out of Jason Peters. Now, me personally, I'm a cut the cord guy. I would move on, but I'm I'm not the decision maker. So we'll see. We know how much this franchise and this owner, and ha- we know how they feel about Jason Peters. So well, we yeah, yeah. Jason, on it. Right. Jason is very close to um, Jeffrey Laurie, the owner. Very. And Jason closed the season well. He shows he could still play in this league, but he doesn't move very well. He's he's just not the even remotely close to the player he once was, but he's he's solid enough you could win with him. Mm-hmm. But the the question is, and Jeff just talked about it. Do you trust your evaluation on Dillard? Are you is there any concern about anything else? I mean, he's healthy, but or do you think he needs one more year of seasoning? It, it, my sense is they're going to be talking about this internally. Where I, as you as we just mentioned. For the season, there was zero chance. There was no way it was in consideration. And Jason told you when you interviewed him, hey, look, he's felt fresh. He's not hurt. Right. But the other problem is, Jeff, he still misses time. He so does. He does come out. So we'll see. We will see what the – and listen, we're going to have a lot of podcasts uh, at the end of the year, during the offseason, during the draft, during OTAs to talk about what's going to happen with Jason Peters. Because although this is it for this edition – of Inside the Birds. You and I aren't going anywhere, so we want to thank our listeners. They've been through us all year, three podcasts a week. We're not going anywhere. We'll still be putting pods out every week of the off season. We're still going to be generating content, have a few surprises for our listeners. We're even going to start a website pretty soon that we're going to put more content on. We're going to continue to put video content on our 
inside the birds youtube page so make sure you're subscribing to that we've just got a lot of big plans of expansion for inside the birds and i know you look forward to it adam i look forward to it and we'll have announcements when they're ready so just want to thank everybody again for listening all year long. It's been a phenomenal year. We thank our friends at 97.3 ESPN. We thank our friends at PHLSportsNation.com, enhancing the fan experience with their coverage of the Eagles and the Phillies and the Sixers and the Flyers. So even though the Eagles are done, PHLSportsNation.com will still be hitting you with great content on the Sixers, even though they're frustrating right now. And then the Phillies will be starting soon. And the Flyers, of course, are um, having a nice season. Uh, always, we thank our friend Hunter Brody, helps produce the podcast. Check out his YouTube channel, Sports Talk with Broads, to get the most passionate fan takes in Philadelphia. And of course, we thank our buddy Todd Harriman's former Eagles offensive lineman and his company, Body Check Wellness, for their support. Um, again, that's going to, this is the end of the season, but it is not the end for Inside the Birds. We're only going to give you more and more content as we go along. So please stick with us. Please follow our Twitter page. Inside the bird at Inside Birds on Twitter because we'll be doing contests and giveaways all throughout the off season. So as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the bird.